Hi guys, Gadget Man 404 here, and today is a, a show of what I carry in my kit bag. As the title says, what is in the bag? Exactly, what is in the bag? Now, everything you see is what lives in this bag 24-7. I never take what is in here lives in here. I don't take anything out. I, I go out. I'll put my batteries on charge when they've been charged up they go back in the bag so here we go as it's winter months one of the main things I find is really handy is a decent pair of gloves these were from Decathlon about six pounds and they're made like from like wetsuit material thermal lined and they've still got the little pads on the fingertips so you can still use your phone touch screen because some people use their iPads and tablets and mobile phones as uh, monitors for their FPV and with this with those kind of gloves you can still use the screen uh, a sunshade on a sunny day obviously essential you need a sunshade it's not a, you know not unreasonable you still get sun in the winter months and some tape double-sided foam tape and just normal tape this is just in case my batteries are coming loose because I just sort of velcro them onto the skids uh, if they get a bit dirty and wet etc they lose their stickiness and propellers you know you can never have too many propellers yeah there's only three there but there is another one in there and I'm just gonna put everything back in here so if I ever go out if I decide to go out today and everything I need is there so that is just all those things that's just in the little pouch you know and there's two pouches on the side I've got tools on the right hand side as you're looking down and on the left hand side I've got things for telling me the wind speed I've got more batteries to power my monitors and my cameras. I also carry a 13 and a half thousand milliamp hour battery bank and sometimes I just decide right on the way to the field I will just stick my camera on charge or stick my phone on charge and then at least when I get to the field something that I'm going to be using has been topped up a bit again and then there you go open up the bag and oh, what's inside oh two more sets of propellers the black ones are the original, the white ones are Typhoon X16s I believe and this is the main compartment. The quad lives in the middle and you have things on these little pockets all around the sides. Now I think you can modify this bag slightly, the insert and I'm pretty sure a, you know, a Phantom 3, 4 would quite happily fit inside. Uh, this is a spare monitor, this is the G-Tang T909, it is actually an FPV monitor watch but I use it by velcroing it to my transmitter as a backup. I use uh, a patch antenna made by Isheen, it's the ROG01 and I have um, a triple patch antenna that is a 16 dbi that i plug into the rog01 so that is really really handy this is just a backup because that doesn't work every single time the i think the plug where it plugs underneath is a bit you know there could be a loose connection because sometimes it'll work first time other times it doesn't uh, why that's got a long lead normally it has an internal battery but when i went to plug it in it pushed in so I actually uh, cut out the battery, left the two leads, soldered an RST connector onto there. That is the aerial. So then I can power that from a bigger battery, like a thousand. Here is some other batteries. That's a flight battery for the actual 3X itself. It's not the original, but it is a, a Radiant 30C 11.1 volts, 3000 milliamp, and that's a 3S got this funny like banana connector but it does fit nice and snug inside of the XT60 which comes with this quad that is just a Cyma X8C battery again I just charge all my batteries up 
and stick them all together and then I know they're all charged. A USB lead, you never know when you need to charge up one of your 1S batteries. So, and this is why I carry that with me, that just lives in the bag. This is the dongle that helps reset the gyros for the 3X. You plug it in on the left hand side near the back of the quad, the power. You hold that button in until the light goes red, it goes out, and then when the light comes back on, you let go, it's reset the gyros, as long as it's on a flat level surface. That also lives in my bag, and that stays there. More battery leads. You can never have too many leads. So, that is the 1S uh, USB charger, and that is a 3S a balance charger that I use sometimes to power my radio gear you know my FPV gear but then that will drain the battery quicker so that's why at present I'm carrying a bit more weight with an extra battery just to power the FPV camera and transmitter but you can buy those in sets and then all you do is you solder negative and positive to the out two outside pins and a JST or Deans or whatever you want to use on the other end and then velcro strap to hold it all together i bought like a set of these things when i was on holiday uh, a cloth for your camera how many times do we land in long grass and we don't check the camera lens is fine and we just take off again with a second battery and then the second battery you know the sun comes out and then you get glare and you get water droplets on the screen of your camera carry one of these little glass case type things and can keep them nice and clean this is another thing I carry with me a voltage meter that you can set this to be uh, an onboard voltage meter so you can set this three settings to whatever voltage you want and when it gets to that particular excuse me <laughs> voltage it will beep but it's not very accurate because if you thrash it then you're using like dips the power and then it might go off a bit earlier than it normally would. Here is a Deans to JST, that is a Deans to an XT60, and there was an XT60 to a banana connector. I made those myself with old leads and old battery connectors, and this is a little pill carrying device for when you go on holiday. But I use it to carry uh, two Lemon RX receivers a six channel and a nine channel and lots of little screws hex screws micro or nano uh, quadcopter propellers that also lives in the bag and these things will go back in the bag as well because they need to stay there in case i ever need them here is another a 3300 3s 30c the 11.1 volt battery again cut out that is a lot longer than the original battery and it fits in there nice and snug. There's no issues there. Um, I try not to fly long distance with that because it's heavier, then you don't necessarily gain a lot more flight time because of the extra weight. It has to work a bit harder to carry and you might lose a bit of flight time. So I'm trying to get in the habit of I go far distance with my 3000 because it's lighter and it seems to just act better than this one. I've, every crash it's had when it's done a return to home, it's with, been with that battery. This is my FPV rig setup that I made myself. There's a power lead, there's the other lead for the transmitter and then it's hot glued into the camera. One of the pins was a bit dodgy, so I took the pin piece off the metal, pushed the wire into where it would normally go, and then hot glued it in, and that's absolutely fine. I get picture all the time. There is the 200 milliwatt transmitter. It's an Eshin, a T526, I believe, and a Pagoda aerial. Again, that was from Banggood or Gearbest, and it cost like five or six pound board camera cost about five pound that's a high def 150 angle field of view at least it's it's quite a wide angle of view so it's really really good that stays in there another a digital voltage uh, battery checker uh, this goes up to like a 6s i believe or maybe even a 7s if there is there's such thing as a 7s but it's definitely a 6 and all you do is you plug your balance 
lead from the battery into those pins on the right hand side and then you cycle through cell one two three and the different style batteries lycads lithium whatever and ions you can test different style batteries with that there is an all-in-one an eSheen a tx03 if you guys can drop me a message with where i can get a spare lens for this because the lens fell out in flight it's just like shrink heat shrinked on at the side and it fell off basically i have been in touch with them and they just said oh we'll give you five pound off your next purchase which i shouldn't have to purchase another one when it bloody fell off when i was flying i mean it doesn't give that much uh, vibration but there you go uh, that's what they're saying I need to do uh, the transmitter obviously is in the middle there and on that little slot at the top that is where the propellers live um, normally the charger lives in the middle pouch there where my hand is but it's just in a bag at the moment but normally my charger and the power supply lead is there this is one of the side packets I call it a windometer, it's not called that, but it measures wind speed and also tells you the temperature. You can change it from uh, centigrade to Fahrenheit and this is very accurate when I go flying. Uh, I've been flying in 13 and a half mile an hour winds. It flew fine and I got nearly 10 minutes out of it, but I wasn't flying very far, I wasn't flying very fast and I wasn't carrying my gimbal that's just another set of screwdrivers it's like got their a ratchet set and then there's a load of different fittings you can put on here's another little set they're not allen keys but they're like micro screwdrivers and these are like the anti-tamper screw type things and you can use them as an allen key I was using them only yesterday to tighten up some screws on my gimbal I think I've repaired my gimbal now I just need to hard mount it back onto the quad etc etc but for now I'm just leaving it off because when I'm flying I'm getting longer and I'm going to try and make myself one of those DIY credit card mounts with the two credit cards held together with two or three zip ties and uh, just see how that works because I'm going to get rid of the jello that I've had in the last two videos and also it's going to reduce the weight of the gimbal. The gimbal is something that I'll fit probably back in the new year now, unless the flights are that bad that I need to put the gimbal back on. And then I just have to remember, obviously, flight times. And don't be so jerky with the sticks because it can upset the gimbal on the 3X. The, the 2 axis gimbal on the 3X isn't one of the best gimbals out there. But it works. And this little screwdriver kit, again, eBay, or Banggood or even Gearbest and again it cost me pounds just a few pounds and there's like 20 30 different fittings and they're quite small to quite big and I don't have an allen key small enough for the the little allen key uh, fittings on the gimbal and I use one of those instead of an allen key and it absolutely works fine uh, on the other side there is just more tools I've got one of these survival knives that turns into a pair of pliers and it's got wire cutters and it's got different blades and a saw blade and it's got different screwdrivers like a flathead and a Phillips and all that kind of thing in there that comes with me every day I have also got two sets of allen keys which uh, are good and they're not because they're quite hard to actually fit or tighten because you keep rubbing that the side keeps hitting something so but that's tools that I carry with me so if I ever needed to and a bit of velcro for backs of monitors and batteries etc then you can stick your batteries as I do to the monitor I've also got wire cutters two mini tripods and uh, a head mounted you know like you wear it like a around your head and then put the camera on there with those two uh, elastic bands and they hold the camera in place and these are to me essential things so when i go out i've pretty much got everything i need with me and 
and I've even got a little plastic card holder for my SD or my micro SD cards which lives inside here as well so whenever I go out I've always got memory cards because I'm having to take memory cards out of my phone or my other camera to put into one camera so then I can't fill my flight by head as well as on board so you know these this is just something I carry with me it might you might think it's overkill and you don't need all this gear but you never know when you are going to need this gear unfortunately with our hobby I could have two perfect flights no bangs nothing and then the third flight something will go off I get interference from something or just something goes off with the quad quadcopters are quite glitchy and they don't have perfect flights every single time so you have to be aware of that and having all these things in this bag covers me for every eventuality of a possible problem you know I don't want to crash my drone when it crashed at the last flight when I was um, hovering near a church just filming a church thinking it was a nice view but I didn't know it was going to do what it did and the, the return to home went completely in the wrong direction and it was stuck up a tree for two days luckily it didn't rain and I was able to get it repaired but this is the bag I use it is made for the free X but you can modify the inserts and you've got two pouches on the outside they do uh, one with a harder shell on the outside and a harder shell on the front but I don't think you get the pockets then but it makes it more waterproof I haven't tested this out if it is waterproof or not but I believe it's it's water resistant repellent to a fashion give me a thumbs up if you found this video informative I really appreciate the feedback and I do get back to all the replies that people leave me if they leave me a comment great video rubbish video or whatever I still get in touch and say thanks where did I go wrong what can I do to make it better I don't want to make bad content for you guys you know I'm doing this on my day off and then for the whole weekend until next Wednesday I'm at work now so I only get Wednesday and Thursday to do my flights my reviews my mods that kind of thing because the other days I'm at work and I work long hours seven o'clock in the morning I'm at work I leave my house at 20 past six and I get home sometimes at gone 11 o'clock I'm like a male nurse in the community so I help people get up in the morning or get their tea or get their dinner medications all that kind of stuff and, and it's very very long hours and it's every day of the year you know caring is not Monday to Friday it's every day and it's all year I'm just about to be looking out of the window. I'm using my uh, voiceover app at present just to show you. It's quite windy. I don't know if you're picking it up or not. Uh, this is filmed in 4K with my Weemius action camera, which is a really, really good camera. And this is inside, and you can still see good color grading. It doesn't sort of distort and uh, it's a great camera and I'll be getting it rigged up to my quadcopter very shortly so continue to subscribe thanks for watching uh, keep looking for new stuff for you guys